you're offline, no internet connection, life has no meaning anymore. You become depressed, trying to understand how in the past they have lived without the internet. You start thinking about reinventing the wheel and recreate the internet from scratch. That's really productive. You're a productive person. I like that. Then you notice it, the Chrome Dino game in front of you. You start playing it and immediately it saves you from overthinking and from being productive. Ha, I truly love this game. Unfortunately, recently when I was playing with Oculus Quest, my internet disconnected from me. I said, no problem. I would just play the Chrome Dino game. Then life hit me. And they have realized that the Dino game doesn't exist in the virtual reality. I guess that now I have to be productive. I have to reinvent the wheel and I have to recreate the Chrome Dino game in virtual reality using JavaScript and Wonderland engine. Now let's get it started. First thing I will need is the player and as a test I have created this box. This box is the player now. I will create a JavaScript component and call it player in an honor to our box's name here. I want the player to be able to jump in order to avoid the future obstacles that they will face in life. So to do that, I'll import this amazing bundle that was created by Pipo for the Wonderland engine. It will facilitate the use of the Oculus game pads in our game. Now in our player component, I'll write event listeners that every time any specified key is pressed, the press start function will be called. In this function, I will write jump in the console to check if it works. It works! Now in every frame, I will check if a jump is pressed. If yes, disable the ability to press it again to prevent spam, then levitate the player up over time until they reach a specific high. If they reach this limit high, then bring the player back down till they are on the floor and re-enable jump ability again. Let's test that. Good, but to polish it more, I will change the up and down speed to make it feel more natural. Nice, we have our jumping player. Next, we need obstacles. And as we all know, there are no better obstacles in life than cactus. So we will create them. I'll download cactus 3D models from the internet. We'll import them in the engine and we'll create obstacle JavaScript components. Every frame update, I'll move the object that has this component forward by 5. If it exceeds the limit that I have set for it, it will reset its location to start over again. Nice! Let's test that. See? It moves forward towards the player. And when it reaches the maximum distance, it resets its location again. Awesome! And yes, you're standing still and the world around you is moving. What are you surprised about? It's an illusion. Everything is moving around you in the same direction. Which makes you think that you're the one who's moving. You're not. You're standing still. Just like me right now in my life. Now I need to know when the player touches an obstacle so that I start doing stuff. For that, I will add a physics component to the player and the obstacles. And when they collide with each other, my onCollision function will fire. In this function, I will console lock lose for now and will stop everything from moving. Let's test that. See what happens when I touch the cactus? It works. I lost. That's awesome. What? A pro tip. While developing games, make the game favor the player. So I will make the obstacle's collision smaller to give another hidden chance for the player to survive if they barely hit one as we don't want our players to rage quit, you know? Maybe we will make the collision even smaller. Smaller. Even smaller. Even small. Okay, let's just go to the next step. We need a restart button, as I have noticed that we lose in this game a lot. I mean, one of our most basic human rights is to be able to restart and try again. To do that, I will change the text in the default panel here open its button component and at the start of the game I will hide it by moving it far away from the player. And on player collision with a cactus, I will unhide the panel by changing its location to in front of the player. Let's test that. Great! Now I need the button to reset stuff. 
That will be done by changing the variables in all components to its stored defaults. So I will create a global reset custom event. Whenever the player presses the button, it will send the message that it was called. And any component that has this event listener will receive the message and then start to do stuff. Like in the obstacle component, I will reset the obstacle's location. And in the player component, I will reset the score, the collision, rehide the button, and basically start a new game with only keeping the high score. Great, let's test that. I have reset far more than required. Let me just edit the code. See? Now the reset button resets this game. Now the score. It's essential in life as it always tells us loudly that we're far away behind in life. It makes us humble. Of course, unless we have one of the top scores. People should then all kneel and serve us. Creating the score is pretty easy. I will add a text, put it in the middle of the screen, reference it from the player component, create a score variable and set the text based on it. And now, every frame update I will add 1 to this score variable, multiplied by delta time to make it frame independent. See? Wait, looks like I will reach a score of 10. Oh, never mind. And I will do the same for the highest score. I will create a new variable called high score, connect it with the text on the end panel, and on game end, I will ask if the current score is higher than the highest score. If yes, then set the current score as the new highest score. Wonderful! I will delete our box player here and replace the real player instead, so that we're the ones who jump and do stuff, not the box. You're no longer needed. I will double load Agamon, cut off his hands, and use it as our dinosaur's hand to immerse the player more into the world. Oh, I have a dinosaur's hand. I must be a dinosaur then. Awesome! I have created a sky sphere image in Photoshop and imported it to the engine. Beautiful. You know what a sky needs? Yes, clouds. So I've created them. A lot of them. Also I've downloaded some 3D models that I will need from the internet. Then I imported all of them to Wonderland engine, placed them in the level, attached them to the obstacle component to give them the ability to move to the edge of the world. The reset their locations like our cactuses. I have deleted the default point lights and added two sunlights, one orange to indicate the sun and one dark blue to indicate skylight effect adding sound effects to the game, and we're done. Remember that the project files are available to download for free in the link in the description. Like, subscribe, and now let's see what we have created. I want to reach a score of 1000. I have always wanted to reach that score. Since I was a little child. It looks too close, yet far away. I'm close to 1000. Few more jumps. Too close? <laughs> what? What? You kidding me? I should have reinvented the internet instead. Haha, <laughs> you thought that was it. Let's make our game work offline. Boom! <laughs>